Um, we did get notice Mr. Stewart is running a couple minutes late, but we have a very full agenda, and I think to keep ourselves uh, on track, we're going to begin the building and contracts meeting at this time. So uh, with that, I'd like to call forward Mr. Saris and uh, get our discussions uh, going. And if there are, are any items that require uh, additional discussion, we will have time during the full board meeting to come back to anything of interest. So the first item, MWE 845-14 database <coughs> resource. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Coughlin Companies, Inc. doing business as Capstone to Coughlin Companies, LLC doing business as Capstone. And there's one approved vendor on the original contract from March 25th of 2014. Right, so this is uh, just a name change. Uh, Cor it's uh, correct, it's, yeah. Okay, all right. Any board member questions? Ms. Scozzi? Thank you, good afternoon, Mr. Saris. I'm just curious, given the notations that are on this summary, was this a non-competitive procurement when it was originally done back in 2014? Well, let's see. <coughs> I don't have that data with me, but uh, I can, I have the 2014 exhibit, but it, at that time, uh, it was a curriculum uh, item. So it was, it went through uh, the curriculum committee rather than uh, a competitively ranked procurement. Okay, thank you. All right, you're gonna take yeah, Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So we're on to item two. Uh, ARA 223-17, conscious discipline. Uh, this contract modification is critical to the focus on school climate and will provide for the continued professional development and instructional materials to expand socio-emotional learning to all elementary grade levels. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2.384 million due to the availability of MSDE grant funds, bringing total contract spending authority to $2.659 million with one uh, awarded vendor approved by the board July 11, 2017. Board members, questions? Do we know the amount of the MSDE grants? Uh, the amount of the of the a grant we're using for this uh, contract is five hundred eighty-four thousand dollars, and that's a Title IV grant passing through MSDE. The remainder, the remaining projected spending is uh, s Title I funds of approximately $600,000 annually for the three-year term of this, of the... Uh so this is entirely grant-based? Correct. Okay. It doesn't preclude individual schools from taking advantage of the program if they have money they'd like to redirect. Mm -hmm. Ms. Causey. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. As we discussed this last time, my understanding was uh, even though Title I is grant money, it's not additional grant money. Is that correct? Correct. <laughs> so that the schools will be making choices to not purchase something else, service or good or supply, <clears throat> um, in order to do this? Correct. Okay, so it's not found money, it's not new additional budgets, it's the schools making choices about not doing something else in order to pursue this. 
There is some additional Title I funding available that maybe Megan will talk about. Good afternoon. So the Title I fund spending authority, um, to your point, is funding that's given to principals for them to use as it supports their school progress plan. The purchase under the Title IV grant, though, would be for every school. So Title I principals would not have to use Title I schools in order to participate. The only change would be if they decided to want to add the professional development that is offered in addition to what we would be doing system-wide, that would be a choice they could make if it supported their climate goal on their SPP. So it's not to say that Title I principals need to use this money because they won't get it otherwise. We would use the Title IV grant funds to provide it to all children in every school. This would just allow Title I principals at their discretion, at their request, really, the spending authority to use that money to provide professional development for the rest of their staff, say, in the summer or as they wanted to expand it school-wide. So this covers a spending authority that may or may not be <laughs> exactly. taken advantage of by. Yep. And this spending authority is for three years. So if we wanted to do it one year at a time, you could move the numbers and do it that way for the schools to make their choices one year at a time. So yes and no. So of course, yes, we could adjust the numbers. I think the challenge would be the timing of Title I budgets in terms of when they have to submit their Title I budget. Um, that would provide a challenge for some of our Title I principals and whether or not they knew they had spending authority to continue, say, for the summer months that would go beyond when their Title I f budgets were due. Um, and then the other challenge, quite honestly, would be the investment in teachers, understanding that they would have time to learn over time, making these shifts in their classroom. So of course, yes, it's possible to change the numbers to be one year at a time, but there would be implications in terms of schools planning for the future. So do you know from principals what that, because you've said you've received interest from principals. Yes. So do you know what they are going to be precluding from their choices? Is there other professional development that they're no longer going to use their Title I funds for? Or do you know, understand what the, I'm trying to understand what the opportunity cost is for sure. moving um, forward. So if, if I can be honest, I think this is filling a need. So I think um, perhaps what they have spent before might not have otherwise matched their goals as well. So I think um, I rarely hear from principals that they don't have enough funds. I think sometimes more of the challenge is we have significant funds and we want to be sure that we're using them in the best way possible. Um, I do know that some schools have used funds in the past for um, other trainings around behavior. I think what they would um, be diverting funds to be more consistent across the system. So in the past, Title I schools have used funds similar to support behavior training in the summer. It has not been one consistent program that we have used system-wide. So I think that would might be a change in their funds. Um, but if you're asking me if I think schools will buy less reading or math materials to do this, I don't think that would be the case. Okay, thank you. Sure. Other questions? Thank you, Ms. Shea. All right, item three. KSH 319-17, Restorative Practices Professional Development. This is a contract modification for continued professional learning and consultation and using restorative practices to build stronger positive relationships between staff and students. Approval is requested to extend the contract term for an additional three years and increase spending authority by $1.5 million, bringing revised total spending authority to $1.7 million with three, three vendors approved by the board on January 24th, 2017. So this seems to complement, uh, unless I'm mistaken, what we've just been discussing as far as professional development for school climate purposes. It absolutely Can you speak does. to that? Yep. So um, I'm gonna do my best. This is technically <laughs> Dr. Wistead's contract, but in her absence. Um, Fair enough. Restorative, so conscious discipline is really about training adults to support the initial teaching of students so that they develop the emotional self-regulation to be able to participate in restorative practices. So restorative practices is about the restoration portion. When we talk about our climate being that prevention, restoration, and logical consequence, the restorative practices is more in the restoration side, whereas conscious discipline falls more squarely in prevention. But in terms of the um, trajectory, conscious discipline in the early grades teaches students the emotional self-regulation so that they're able to participate in a restorative circle. So we feel that they complement each other very well. 
pretty well done. Thanks. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> okay, uh, item four. Thanks. MBU 504-19 ESOL for immigrant and refugee students. This is a new contract to provide support to English language learners to include after school tutoring and soccer programming. Approval is requested for a three year, nine month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $720,000. Mr. McDaniels. Uh, just to mention that this was uh, discussed and approved by the curriculum committee back in May, so we are in support of that. Okay, very good. All right, seeing no additional comments or questions, we'll move on to item five. Okay. Ah, Ms. Causey, hold on, let's backtrack to number four. <coughs> Ms. Causey, you have the floor. Thank you. So uh, the funding sources grants, are these new grants or are these grants that the schools are already receiving year so over year? This is actually a Title III grant that comes through um, MSDE to the um, ESOL office. And so they would be using the Title III funds to be able to um, support this program at these locations. Okay, thank you. And was this competitive or non-competitive? Because of the instructional component, I'm sorry, that's really a you question. Right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, Ms. Shea is exactly Great. right. Great. So this was selected as um, as was noted through our curriculum selection process having gone to the curriculum committee and policy and rule 6002. Okay, thank you. Sorry. We move to item five. KSH 310-19, Family Literacy with Young Readers. This is a new contract for materials and instruction, raising a reader. The program is for all students enrolled in pre-kindergarten. The program will supplement the pre-kindergarten curriculum by extending language and literacy learning into the home and ensuring all pre-kindergarten students have access to books outside of school. Approval is requested for a two-year, nine-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $394,890. Questions? I may have asked this before, but could anybody speak to any tie-ins that exist with this and our community schools program? I can speak to how it supports um, the community supports through the ABC or the Eliza Brandywine Center and the Judy Center because this is targeting, this is part of our Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant and in that grant we were asked to target the population of birth to age five and so in terms of those community programs um, they will participate as partners as well as the Baltimore County Public Library because this program is about creating home literacy routines with our youngest learners right. so we're using pre-k students to help us get the books into those homes but we will be targeting community supports through those three avenues okay my understanding is too we have at our community schools certain liaisons so to speak with our communities that can advocate these types of programs sure. yep. and, resources. and part of the grant funding requires that we partner with those community partners as well uh, if I may just add, uh, Mr. Stewart, yes, um, certainly part of this is educating parents and at our community school locations. That's something that our community school liaison can work with the um, parent associations at those schools and offer uh, training sessions in the evening as well. Great. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Okay. <coughs> Item six. Okay. KSH 358-18 Vision Equipment Supply and repair. This is a new competitively bid contract for high quality vision equipment, maintenance and training for students with vision impairments for the Department of Academic Services. And approval is requested for a five year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $375,000. Okay, questions? Mr. Yolfoner. Uh, I remember several years ago, um, apparently there were more uh, individuals who needed these services than we had appliances for. What do we do in that case? Well, we have been purchasing equipment, uh, just not 
at in the threshold that required this bid. I don't know if uh, Dr. Adams has anything to add. And Dr. Wistedstead, um, we have currently 10 students who require Braille um, equipment on a full-time basis. At the same time, one of the things that Ms. Ryder in the Office of Special Ed Education does a wonderful job of is anticipating students in the pipeline. So we have a number of students who have low vision currently, and we know often that those students' vision deteriorates over time. So if we look at those numbers, um, this contract is an opportunity for us to not only provide the equipment and training that students and teachers currently need, but also have the authority to support students in the pipeline. And so we have currently, um, besides the 10 students who use the services full-time and this equipment they would need it full-time we have 24 students with vision as a primary disabling condition um, we have a 149 students with IEP vision services on their IEPs and we have um, 60 students with 504 plans that include accommodations around their vision and this um, contract and this training would allow us to support those students other comments questions Ms. Causey. so just to dovetail with mr. Ufelder for every student that needs these services or equipment, we do have something available for them. Yes, we, um, this, this particular contract with this bidder, if approved, will allow us to have um, purchase equipment. It comes with a customer care plan. It covers, it will cover repairs and also training for the teachers. Um, one of the questions that I know has also come up is whether the teachers also get a similar braille device or equipment. And similar to, similarly, when we purchase augmentative communication equipment for students, the teacher doesn't get that equipment, but the student has it and therefore we provide professional learning for the teachers and the staff on how to support the student in using that equipment. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, seeing no additional hands, we will move on to item seven. Okay, uh, this is ARA 205-19, copy and printing devices. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract for leasing and maintenance of copiers and printers for the Office of Purchasing. Approval is requested for a six-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $750,000. Okay, questions? <coughs> All right, seeing none. We'll advance to item eight, please. Uh, the next one is uh, Mr. Dixit's MBU 507-18 Security System Access Control Installations, Repairs, Parts, and Preventative Maintenance, and it's really just a contract modification to assign the contract from Kratos Public Safety and Security Solutions to Securitas Electronic Security. Uh, Three other vendors were awarded this contract uh, in December 2015. Um, we're just uh, only only one is uh, changing uh, was ch name changed as a result of a corporate acquisition. So it's a name change. Yes. But similar people that we're interfacing with and providing services. Yes. Okay. Questions, comments? All right, seeing none, uh, do I have a motion to recommend the approval of items I-1 through I-8 to the full board? Second. Very good. All in favor, please raise your hands. All opposed? We can deal with them at the time. Very good. That concludes the work of the Building and Contracts Committee.